descending into myself was like the scariest thing I'd ever done. I've jumped out of a plane. I've gone scuba diving at nighttime. I've done all kinds of things that terrified me. And the scariest one of all was meditation. Going inside of myself, facing everything that was living in my body. And, you know, anybody who knows anything about like subconscious psychology, our shadow, all of that, like that shit isn't benign. It's not just hanging out in there. It's squeezing out the edges. It's coming up and being projected onto everybody else who's not you. <laughs> you know, like that stuff is in there and it's calling the shots. If you're not working with it consciously, it's unconsciously working you. How? <laughs> Lolo! Lolo wanna start the video with everybody. Oh, Lolo, send love to everyone. Yeah, everybody. Everybody get some love from Lolo. <laughs> right? I think this is a first. Oh my gosh. Hey, hey, hi guys. Um, what's up? I felt like recording and as usual lately, uh, what do I feel like talking about? I feel like talking more about the North and South node. Like apparently we haven't had enough already. Um, because today I really want to do kind of a recap on the Taurus North node and the Scorpio South node transit that at the day of recording this on July 4th, 2023, we do still have not quite two weeks left of this transit. So who knows, like I may even have more to share um, before all is said and done, but I do want to take a little bit of time and look back at my video that I made at the beginning of this transit, um, I'll link it in the description box. It is a really nice video. I think I did a really good job actually. Um, also the most like highest viewed, I was going to say most successful, but I don't really think that's true. Um, I have some other videos that I think are even just as good, if not better, but that one definitely got the most attention, definitely got the most views. So do feel free to check that out. That was what I released um, kind of at this same time where we were just finishing up the Gemini North Node and the um, Taurus North Node was about to start in a few weeks. So that forecast of here's what my intuition is guiding me to share with you before we've lived any of it. Um, I want to say, again, I think I did a good job. I, I definitely pointed in the right direction. I myself have gone back to that video multiple times and rewatched it and had the contemplation play out again in the new leading edge of like what had come to light since the last time I watched it. So I think it was a it was a very helpful framework to kind of have the the literal frame that you could fill in your experiences and your own individuality. The thing is, and this is what today's video is, is like what does this really mean? My intuition gave me the words, I had the concepts, I had examples, I had enough of an understanding and conviction to tell it in a very enjoyable way. But here's the thing, I, I did such a good job and I have to admit in order to do this video that like, I mean, it's not that I was full of shit. I won't say that, right? We weren't full of shit, Lola, but there was a gap in like a real lived experience kind of place of like, yes, this is what it's called, but I didn't really know what that meant. And so the things that I have like on my little list is here, all the things of like, these are the, the words and the concepts that I was offering in that initial forecast video um, that I had such a hollow understanding of all of these things. And so it's not that I need to correct anything, but I do want to add another layer of like the lived experience of 
what these things actually look like when they play out in the physical, which is a very Taurus North Node kind of contemplation. Like not just the concepts, but like the practical application of what actually happens when you experience a greater level of embodiment. For example, that was one word that I knew that at the end of the Taurus North Node cycle, that we will be more embodied. We will be that. And yet I had no freaking clue what that actually meant was going to unfold. So that's just one example. Like I showed you, I have a whole list and I'm not going to try to stick to the list so much as this will be kind of part story time with my own experience and what happened in my unfolding, but also tying it back to these initial concepts that I knew were going to happen. But now that we've lived it, I definitely have a much deeper, much uh, more filled in and vibrant version of understanding these things and what they truly mean in our evolutionary journey. So with all of that in mind, um, I do want to start with a piece that I don't think I touched on at all. I don't think I said the word meditation in the the video last time, the, the overview before the transit started. I don't think meditation came up. And this is why I kind of like half have to admit I'm a little full of shit because I didn't know meditation had anything to do with it. Turns out for me personally, at least it was the fucking doorway. It was like the freaking gateway into all of this that I'm going to go into, like the very first piece of how did it actually come about for me was meditation. And I can point you towards an episode of Heart to Heart that I did very early on in this transit with a person who found my content through my podcast, I think, through my I Learned podcast and found their way onto my YouTube channel, found their way to my email address, reached out to me. We did a couple Heart to Hearts together um, and I'll link those down below. And it was during one of those conversations that he had the most simple definition of meditation that I had ever heard before. Um, I had been trying to meditate for maybe like seven years and I suck at this or I hate this. That was like basically the gist of, of my meditation experience. And he, he didn't bring it to me as like meditation. We were talking about holding space as like a healer of other people, like as, as a, a counselor or a, a safe space for someone else, the act of holding space and witnessing and how sacred of a role that is and of like just the beautiful gift that that can be to another person. And I was like, you know, I was in that. I was right there with him like, yes, 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 yes. And He's like, that's why I love, I, I think this is the gist of how it, how he came, like connected that in, but like basically was like, that's why I love meditation because it's just holding space, but for yourself, it's, it's taking your attention, your witnessing and just looking at yourself, just witnessing yourself, like holding space for yourself, like going inward and asking like, how are you today? And like really wanting to know the answer. Like when I sit down with one of my clients, which was something I was very familiar with. Like when I ask them at the beginning of a container, how are you? I want to know. I want to know the real answer. I, I'm not looking for the, you know, the Libra South node kind of coming up version of I'm fine. How are you? Which is what a lot of people will give. And like, that's fine. But like, we're going back to you. I really want to know how you are, especially if you're paying to sit with me. Like we got to start somewhere. Um, but the act of holding space for myself had never been how I had come to meditation in the past. It was much more like you have to clear your mind or you have to focus on your breathing or you have to do it for 15 minutes or you have to close your eyes or you have to sit like this or like whatever the, the rules were of like that of what I had absorbed so far which is much more a reflection of my personality. Like I was out there looking for the rules so that I could follow them, which is why I absorbed so many rules. 
Um, but like when he said that, it's just holding space for yourself. I was like, whoa, whoa. And the other big one, there was a lot, that was a long conversation, but the other big piece that came out of that conversation was one, it's just, it's just paying attention to yourself. It's just like being there for yourself. Like you would be there for someone you love. So like, yeah, when you, you know, sit by yourself and close your eyes or not is what he said. It's just like being with yourself. Like you would want to be with a friend who maybe had a hard day or is having a good day and you want to celebrate with them. Like you're just being with them. And so to do that for yourself. And I'm like, what do you mean if you close your eyes or not? And he's like, you don't have to close your eyes. And I was like, what? Because that's one of the reasons that I do not I did not like meditation is that when I would sit and I would close my eyes, the back of my eyelids would become a freaking movie screen for my brain to project the just the most horrific nightmarish images and clips and visions and just like awful, awful things that it would show me on the backs of my eyelids. And so him saying that you don't have to close your eyes, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so meditation, like he changed the game for me on meditation. And from that day, like literally we get off the Zoom and I went outside and I moved between a few different places, but I was outside the whole time. I had my eyes open pretty much the whole time. I didn't do anything fancy. I just sat with myself. I just was there for myself. I just was giving myself some friend time, like being my own friend. And when I sat, and I am going to go into this story because it begins the thread of like, basically, why don't we get in our body? Why don't, like, why is meditation so uncomfortable? Why do we do anything to distract ourselves to keep ourselves up here in our brain instead of sinking down into our body and maybe you've heard like the body keeps the score this is a book that's out there i think the guy's name is like bessel van der kolk hopefully i did that pretty good i think it's pretty close the body keeps the score it's the idea that trauma lives in the body the memory of the pain lives in your body so even after you consciously aren't like thinking about it all the time you do still have like the clench the wound in your body and when when i sat that day you know it was like three hours long but the very first little chunk like within the first 10 seconds i do sit and because i'm i'm me i'm still half following the rules and i like sit down and i close my eyes and i'm like i'm just gonna be with myself i'm just gonna like see what comes up you know, it's not about trying to make the thoughts stay away. It's more about like, just like you wouldn't, you know, micromanage your friend, like no, stop talking, no, stop talking, no, stop talking. Like you would just let them have the floor, especially in a container where you're going to hold space for someone. That's what you're there for and to witness them. You would just let let it come and so that's what I was going to do was just let it come and I do close my eyes and what I saw is a very violent image where the storyline was essentially again this is totally a vision that I had in meditation a nightmare I would say that I had in meditation um, of an intruder that had come into my home while I was not here and had hurt my dog and my dog is now not here anymore like just there there she is and this is what I saw this image and this understanding that the person had come in and blah, blah like and my eyes like popped open so that was like 10 seconds of like trying to go into myself and that's what I have to look at is like somebody offed my dog really brain really like God, this is why I fucking hate this. That's what I said, was this is why I fucking hate this. This is why, you know, I understand now. This is why I don't give you my attention because you show me shit like this and I hate it. And when you close the gap on like, who are you talking to? You know, I'm talking to me. 
this is why I hate going inside of myself. This is why I hate being with myself because this is the kind of shit that my brain serves up to me non can stop. I don't like it in there. It's scary. It's painful. It's ugly. It's violent. It's just my worst nightmare. That's what's in there. And yeah, that's what's in there. Not forever, but any fear that you've never, you've never faced, any wound that you've never healed, any pain that you've never fully processed and digested and released, that's still in there. It's still in there, you know? And, oh, that was a rough minute of like, this is why I hate this. And, you know, my friend's voice comes back to me and I go back to like, this is, I'm holding space, (laughs) literally holding myself. I, I was, I really physically was like holding on to something because descending into myself was like the scariest thing I'd ever done. I've jumped out of a plane. I've gone scuba diving at nighttime. I've done all kinds of things that terrified me. And the scariest one of all was meditation. Chew on that. Going inside of myself, facing everything that was living in my body. And, you know, anybody who knows anything about like subconscious psychology, our shadow, all of that, like that shit isn't benign. It's not just hanging out in there. It's squeezing out the edges. It's coming up and being projected onto everybody else who's not you. (laughs) You know, like that stuff is in there and it's calling the shots. If you're not working with it consciously, it's unconsciously working you. So this discovery of, you know, again, like, (laughs) it's okay, Um, of self-hatred that I hated my pain and I was also at the same time identified with my pain and that made it even more painful to have to face it because God, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why can't you just be normal? (laughs) Like why, why do we have to fucking look at this? Like it just was such an exasperated, like, God, you're so high maintenance. Like that's essentially that very first discovery, that very first 10 seconds of meditation. Like that was my takeaway. That's what came up. You know, I'm going to be a friend to myself and I'm going to hold a space open for myself and I'm going to just witness what comes up. And this was it. I wasn't super pleased (laughs) with what I got out of the meditative space at first. And then I had to, you know, again, my friend's voice came back to me and I had to flip it. Like if I was sitting in a session with a client who had asked for my help and I was listening to their story and their experience and they said this exact happening, they had the exact thing happen to them and they felt that way. What would I do? What would I say? And I literally broke down crying when I realized that what I would do, you know, it, I meet with my clients over Zoom, so clearly I'm not physically going to do this, but I would get them on my lap and I would hold them and I would rock them. And I would let them feel the full essence of what they're really feeling. Because I know that the only way to release is that it's got to come up to come out. And so I energetically got myself on my own lap. (laughs) I'm sitting there holding myself and rocking myself because hating yourself is hard so i held myself in compassion because hating i yeah it's hard it hurts to hate yourself 
nothing about it feels good. And in that moment, there's nothing I can do because this is what it is, you know, like meditation, like you're not, not doing surgery on it. You're just witnessing. You're just holding open a space where like this can arise and you can see what it is. Like I said, in the Scorpio part of that, um, initial video that all the, all Scorpio wants, all you have to do, all you have to do, turd, is sit with it. And I'm like, this self-hatred feels like trying to swallow a hot poker and you want me to sit with it. Really? And I had to continue to practice pretending that I was not me, that I was my client, that I was my child, that I was my best friend, that I was my lover, that I was someone that I actually loved in order to be able to enter into meditation. I had to start identifying as a being that is loved and that that was essentially like the the hook point up on the surface that like now I've got my harness on and I'm hooked to that and I like can you know like descend down <laughs> I can descend down into the scorpionic pit of self-hatred self-loathing and all of the most ugly experiences that we humans can chew on and the only reason I could face that was this love of other people that I essentially borrowed out of my love for other people. I borrowed that and like gave it to myself on purpose because, because why not? Like, this is what the, like basically in my mind at that point, you know, I had done the, the Taurus North Node video about six weeks before and I had been thinking about that transit for months. And so now we're living it. We're six weeks into the transit thereabouts, maybe about four weeks in. And like, you know, here's this awful hard thing. And I just got done giving the advice that when the pain comes up, you sit with it. And when you understand it, when you gain what you need to, when you fully digest it and process it, you release it, you transcend, it's all good. And then here I was with this awful pain coming up and I'm like, how do I do this? Like, and so figuring out how to, how to meditate was essentially figuring out how to get hooked up with my, my self-compassion and my like literal self-love. Like I've been practicing self-love for a long time and I've gotten, you know, pre-Taurus North Node Transit, I had gotten so much kinder and gentler with myself than I had ever been before. But I honestly think like, I don't, I didn't break into true self-love until that moment of having this awful nightmare come to the surface and being like, this is why I hate meditating. This is why I hate spending time being inside of my body like recognizing that self-hatred, that was the opening point to basically deciding that like, I, I don't hate myself. Like deep down, I really don't. You know, deep down in my bones, in my animal body, the natural body that I was born with, the me that I really am, knows that I deserve love. And all that I'm meeting right here, this self-loathing, this self-hatred, this is the programming. This is the scorpionic enmeshment with other people and their expectations and their opinions of me that I am still giving stock to. I am still putting my power in what they think of me. That is why this is so awful to me. Like it's, it's essentially proof of like how tangled up I am in what other people are thinking and saying and doing and telling me that I am instead of what I'm really feeling. And so meditation as a path into self-love, into being willing to sit with whatever comes up 
And when we get still, when we get to safety, like you think about if you're truly in danger, which is definitely way more on like the Scorpio end. When you're truly in danger, there's adrenaline, there's shock, there's all kinds of mechanisms that will kind of like guide your body to compartmentalize certain things as in pain, like shock. I mean, you can you can have a broken leg and be in shock and full of adrenaline and still run to safety because your survival instinct is that strong. Like our self-protective mechanism is wildly strong even if we're not consciously tuned into that and so like when when the adrenaline stops pumping when you do reach safety when you allow your nervous system to come back to equilibrium you know in that broken leg scenario, it's not time to like grab a Mai Tai and put our feet up for the day. Like it's time to friggin' figure out what are you going to do with your broken leg? You know, like the first step when you reach safety is to heal the wounds that did not have a chance to breathe or receive proper attention while you were still in battle conditions, in danger. And so my introduction to meditation, um, February, 2022, about a month into this Taurus North Node transit, it kicked off. I'm going to say it was about six to eight weeks, like a couple months of crying every single day, multiple times a day. And not like something would come up and like, oh, I think I should cry about that. It'd be like, just like out of the pit of my stomach, like a wave of pain. God, it just like chokes me up. Like even just thinking about it, just like hurt and heartbreak. Like just my insides are like ripping themselves apart. And that's all. Just a wave of flood of tears and I'll, I'll sit there and cry for like 20 minutes. I don't know why. No clue. My heart's broken. It's like a random Tuesday and I'm just sitting here in my bedroom, like nothing's going on. Wave of pain. Wave after wave after weeks into it I'm like is this just my life now (laughs) like do I just do I just cry all day every day like how am I ever going to rejoin society like at that point I was working on a contract I had a, a project that I was doing where I was working from home I didn't even have to collaborate with another person it was completely like self contained so like some of it I even did like in the middle of the night sometimes I'd wake up and like work on it So, I mean, I had a very open space to be able to do the thing where I'm like repelling and descending down into my Scorpio, into like, what is in me? What is living inside of me right now that is already present, that same as if I was going to hold open a container of space for someone in a session, let me do that for myself. And so when these waves came, my duty to them was to feel how much it hurt. And so again, lots of hugging myself, lots of rocking, lots of energetically holding myself on my own lap and being there for myself while I was allowing all of this to be felt, to come up so that it can come out. And it was months of literally like six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times a day, I'm crying for 15, 20 minutes at a time. Like it ate up a lot of my life for those couple months. Um, and what I can tell you is that, you know, I hear a lot of people, I was just talking to a Taurus North Node last week who was telling me, you know, I don't let myself go there 
because I'll just fall apart and that'll just be the end of it. And like, I can promise you that if you have a lot of pain stored in your body, number one, yes, it will take quite a while, weeks, months, years to kind of melt that out of there to, you know, allow that to transmute. But it is melting. It is transmuting. It is transforming. So like I drew this picture. I'll have to see. I'll, I do have pictures of, of it from my journal, but like I'll put it on the screen here. But essentially like before the Taurus North Node Transit was the little all filled in body where I feel like my whole entire body was full of pain, was full of unhealed, unfelt pain. And it lived in there. And my entire life, it's like just kind of stacked in there. And the fuller it gets, the more I just keep cramming it in. <laughs> you fit a lot. And so, yeah, if you've been doing that like I was, then the melting process can take a while. Um, like at this point, after those first couple months, um, I, I wasn't crying all day for then like it would just be like kind of once a day twice a day you know kind of it, it declined and now I mean it's to where I cry probably like once a week every other week something like that when it like again when the wave comes you let it come out and then it's out um, but once it's out it's out so the stockpile of pain that was in our body when we started this transit has transformed a lot. You know, everybody's going to have a different relationship with how much of their pain they were able to transmute during this time. Um, and like, I wonder, you know, I feel so freaking makes my head itch. I feel so grateful <laughs> for, for that friend who like popped up out of the woodwork to like, tell me, that's why I love meditation because it's just holding space for yourself. You know, like that one little thought kind of off the cuff, like didn't even, he just didn't even think he's like, that's why I love this, you know, and uh, talk about change my life. And the thing about all of this is that this is embodiment. <laughs> this is like the, 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 the part where I'm like, I did not know what I was talking about because I'm like, we're going to be more embodied and, you know, we're going to get more in our body. And I had no, cons I had no concept for like what that process was actually going to be, like what that path actually was to walk. Um, but to go into your body means to face the pain and the trauma that lives there. You know, like everything that was ever too much for our right now capacity to process. So we took that and we put it in our shadow. That mechanism is beautiful. I freaking love the fact that we have a shadow. It, it's proof, in my opinion, that basically this universe is benevolent and loves us. And we, we get to protect ourselves no matter what. Like the mechanism that will allow us to take something that we're not able to process and stick it into a part of our brain where we don't have to even think about it so that our psyche can continue and we can continue to survive on this planet until a time when we reach a level of safety, when we allow our nervous system to come into equilibrium and those wounds can rise. This is embodiment being able to sense and feel what is real inside your body. And, you know, yes, embodiment has a lot to do with the Taurus North Node, but I think there's a reason that like, you know, to work on the Taurus North Node, you do, you're coming off that Scorpio South Node. So like to make a journey of embodiment, you do have these gifts of being able to face deep, dark, painful shadows. You have lots of experience with feeling the pain. And then that Taurus North Node of Embodiment is about bringing your body back to equilibrium, where basically it heals itself 
this was another concept that I knew would happen. Like all healing, all, all you need for healing is equilibrium because the body will naturally regenerate itself. And deterioration is when you're out of equilibrium, so healing cannot naturally occur. So like Taurus energy going on this journey of embodiment, when we bring our body back to equilibrium, when we bring our central nervous system back to a state of calm, there's no tension in the body. Your lungs are able to breathe at a nice leisurely pace. Your body will believe that you are physically safe. And once you are physically safe, it will, your intuition will bring you the wounds that are ready to be healed now that you've made your way to safety. So this mechanism, this relationship between embodiment and safety and our shadow and the mechanism of shock that self-protection is so ravenous, like it's at the core of who and what we are is self-protection, which is another word for self-love. We want our own survival, whether we consciously, you know, think or work on that or not. We do love ourselves and that self-protection of putting things in our shadow is proof of that, again, in my opinion. So embodiment, what that really is, is being able to feel what's real inside your body. And that requires that scorpionic ability to let pain exist to let negative emotion or painful experiences, to let that exist, to not just keep on for the rest of time shoving that stuff in your shadow because then your body is full of it. And then you're the puppet on the string and the string is your shadow, you know, having to work out all of these things that are unchecked and unattended pain that exists within you that you know deep down you should not have to feel. And so it works its way out the edges to try to give you some relief. And then we end up like blaming ourselves for shadowy outbursts that we have, or at least I know I do. Like I give myself such a hard time in the past about like all of my emotions and all of my sensitivity and all of my outbursts um, and my disruptions. Um, I, I was such a villain in my own story because of these things. But all it really is, is being able to feel what's real inside of our body. In any given moment and to do that it takes a stomach for the human condition and that's where the Scorpio South node actually comes in really handy but in order to really get the best of it to take that Scorpio South node and not just spin in that like old enmeshed state of pain and wounding and you just can't even see which way is up in order to take the journey of empowerment and embodiment means taking that scorpionic ability to tolerate all of these things and turn that tolerance on yourself you know and take the journey of embodiment that will when you I think of it like a bucket like a full five gallon bucket picture that and you have it full of water and then you take a bowling ball and you drop it in the bucket. You know, you can picture exactly what happens, right? Like there's physics, like there's only room for what the bucket will naturally hold. And so if the bucket's already full, meaning if the bucket is already full, if your body is already full of pain and energy and old wounds and old stories and all of these different things that you press pause on because you weren't capable at the time, beautiful mechanism, all of this is already in there. The bucket is already full. So when through your embodiment journey, through meditation or yoga or however you go about getting in your body, feeling inside yourself what is real, as you take your awareness, that's the bowling ball, and you drop it into your body, what's going to happen? Like what's in there has to come out. It's a physical space, so there's only room for so much. So if we want to get in our body, if we take that journey of embodiment, it means processing and purging the pain that currently lives there so that there is new room, new space for our awareness to inhabit that space. So I'm gonna leave it right there for part one, and I'm gonna come back on a part two and talk about kind of like once you're in your body then what because <laughs> that's like a whole world that like this is why i know 
I know that I was kind of full of shit on that first video. It's so intuitive with no physical experience to back it up because I could not have predicted. I could not have foreseen what will happen when you get in your body. I had no freaking clue, which is proof in that I didn't mention this at all in that first video. So this is where we get into the territory of like completely unknown. We're off the rails. We're into the territory of like life being the beautiful, amazing teacher that it always will be. I do hope though that you have enjoyed this part one of this contemplation. Do check out the description box. I've listed some things there for you as we finish up the rest of the Taurus North Node Transit here in 2023. Um, this you know this cycle will be back around in 18 and a half years you know 18 and a half years from now we'll get to do it again as far as purging the pain that lives in our body but that's not to say that our journey of embodiment and our conscious awareness inhabiting our body meaning we are aware of what is real what we are feeling in real time in our body in any given moment we can continue that with the Aries North Node, I have a whole library of content on the Aries North Node. Super exciting. Do check that out. More coming all the time. Um, that I'm going to foreshadow just a little bit kind of where my head's at right now on my channel. Right now, I'm not thinking of letting anything go. Um, but from where I'm at right now with I haven't really been doing a whole lot on my channel other than the Aries North Node content lately. What I'm feeling is that I really want to specialize in talking about the North and South node. I feel like I have a really beautiful symbiotic relationship with the whole concept of healing past karma and moving into future potential like that long, long, long before I ever found astrology, that concept was already something that just came very naturally to me. So specializing in discussing the north and south node is something that feels like a very natural progression and unfolding so i think it, it makes a lot of sense that i the well feels bottomless when i look at this aries north node transit which is why i also just released on the channel the first batch of looking at the specific north node placements and how does the aries north node affect each individual north node group specifically like what what does each north node group need to know to really apply this aries north node transit and get the most out of it so that you can move towards not necessarily aries energy that's just the tool that we're using this time in this chapter but you're using that tool to move towards your own personal north node so if you are a taurus north node which my community at this point is full of them <laughs> attracted so many of you guys hello i love you um i loved hearing your stories in the comments i love getting to see the similarities where you guys are there is such a such a cohesion within nodal groups where i i gotta think it's soothing to hear that you're not alone that this is such a a common cycle a common path that taurus north nodes walk through um, getting to connect with others who are on that same path. I, I love that getting to see when that happens in the comments. Um, but to that end, you may also enjoy that video where I released the first set about the first batch of North nodes more coming soon. I may even just keep looping through the batches to keep talking to you guys. Basically all of that to say, if you have any questions at all or any like like basically like little pieces that you're like, I just wish I could understand this when it came to the nodes, like everything is great and it seems super helpful, but like this just sticks out and it doesn't really make sense. I would love to hear what is that? Because I feel like that's a piece of what I need to be talking about. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Do take a minute to like the video, to subscribe to the channel if you wanna stick around and hear more content on the nodes more content on how we can heal our past karma and move into move into our future potential. This is definitely a sweet spot for me personally where I love to get going and chat with you guys. Would love to hear from you and interact with you down in the comments. I do read every single comment. I love getting to hear from you. Until next time, I do hope that you will take such good care of yourself and of your embodiment journey and so will I.